Hi, Mark here from Excel with an evening wine tasting of a Portuguese Alvarinho. Uh, it's got to be done pretty quickly because there is a cat over there who will jump on me if I don't get this done in about four minutes because he is after his dinner. Now, uh, it's a Portuguese Alvarinho which features as one of the seven outstanding wines in the panel test of Alvarinhos and Alvarinhos from Portugal and northwestern Spain from Galicia uh, in the September 21 decanter. Uh, there are seven outstanding wines. Most of them are vanished and are very difficult to find anywhere, uh, partly because that's a review that's been in the can at Decanter for quite a while. Vintages have come and gone in that time. Some vintages haven't even arrived yet. Uh, so we've rounded up what we can, and that's this wine here, which is from Quinta de Santiago uh, in Portugal. Now, it's got an interesting sort of contrast, and the article in Decanter goes into it, comparing the uh, styles of those two of Portugal versus Spain and it, it comes down as much as anything as far as I can see to being one of the climatic influence. In Spain it's very much driven by the ocean and the sort of cool waters around areas by just a little further inland in Portugal you're relying on more altitude and so you're getting a very slight difference in the way those wines are styled. Um, there is a spectrum of flavours in Alvarinho, uh, rather like there is in any white grape from the, the very citric and the zingy right the way through to the really quite full, generous, typically more tropically fruited. Um, and with Albarino, it's typically the New World ones, which tend to be that slightly more tropical, rich style. So we've got styles from, uh, or wines from Uruguay and New Zealand, which are really quite rich. Um, some of the Galician ones from Rias Bias, some are more in the middle. This, as it emerges, is at the much more citric, zingy, zesty end of the market. Um, Alvarino pretty much known along with things like Gewurztramina and Viognier for its powerful nose and this has a definite aromaticity to it, it has a florality to it, white flowers, people talk about jasmine, honeysuckle, that is all here. But on the nose also, a couple of other features. There is something really quite um, zesty with it, very much you can tell this is quite a citric wine and as well there is a certain creaminess, vanillariness to it. Now, one of the judges in the decanter panel picks up, as she describes it, I think as, as definite oak. Now, there is no oak used on this wine. The whole thing is fermented and aged in steel. But I see what she means. There is a certain creaminess to it. Now, this is a wine that is quite heavily leased on its aged on the lees. I think about 10 months it spends on the lees, creating a complexity, completing this, uh, creating a, a, a creaminess to the wine as well. And I think that's what that is. Um, but definitely, you can almost smell the acidity before you taste it. Taste it, and quite a few words spring to mind. Firstly, it's really very dry. That is a very dry wine. Now, that dryness and the acidity that drives that dryness are quite sharp on the palate as it stands at the moment. I tried it with some food. I had it with a couple of sardines just now and a bit of chorizo separately. Really good cuts through those foods really, really well um, and actually shows the wine in a much better light. In terms of flavours, definitely citric, definitely lemony, a little bit limey perhaps. There's almost a few sort of Riesling characters, possibly even uh, Shannon type characteristics to this. Quite complex. That creaminess or a sense of creaminess is definitely there. but. It also brings in this question of minerality, which those of you who watch these videos a bit will know is a topic I don't particularly like. I think that when a wine is particularly dry, people start talking about minerality. Whether that's a mineral characteristic or not, I'm not sure, but there's a dryness to that where people start talking about minerality in my experience. Um, it's, it's a really interesting wine. I must be honest, it's not my personal style, of Albarino, it is a little too dry and a little too zesty and perhaps a little too light. And I think that may be to do with its age. I think that this is a wine that will definitely age well with that high acidity. And actually in a year's time, I think it will be really great. Definitely you can drink it now as ever with food, but it is definitely more tart, more zesty, more zingy than a lot of the Galician uh, Albarinos out there. Yeah, it's great. I can see why it scores well. And uh, yes, I think at £15.50 it's a cracking wine, possibly one to put away.